All right, I think we're live. All right, let's do it. Uh, cool. Let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen, Sam? Um, not yet. Hmm. Interesting. One sec. Let me see. How about now? Mm. Oh, I need to add it to the stream. Sorry. Now I can. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, Sam, you already know we were thinking of working on this NFL health and safety helmet assignment competition, and this is oh, this is the recent one. This is not the one yeah. we want to do. We want to go back for the uh, it's NFL first. last year. Yeah. Yes, that's the one, NFL first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as part of this stream, then what we want to do is we want to discuss uh, the Kaggle top billing solutions for this one, and it's more so for our learning, so we understand what exactly went on in this competition. Yeah. But we're also uh, very nice people that we live sharing and embarrassing ourselves while trying to learn <laughs> publicly. So I guess uh, if things... This is not a tutorial, this is not... Uh, this is not, yeah, I guess, what is it not, CM? Do you want to define what this is not? I, I can say what it is. So it is basically uh, two of us learning and like basically live streaming it. So like if things don't work or if you like, if I take five hours to like do a plot, please excuse me. Oh, <laughs> you're mocking me is. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same, same <laughs> saying that because I took like 30 minutes to try and build one plot and then <laughs> that didn't work. So I had to do something else and... Yeah, that's so all you're, right. you're very mean. I'm sure no one remembers. You didn't have to remind them. <laughs> sure, so it what... wasn't me reminding everybody. <laughs> so what are we well, doing today, Oman? We're, we're studying the top solutions from the past competition. That's correct. That's correct. Let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so I think one of my favorite legends has been Chris Diot. Is that how I pronounce him? How I pronounce yes. his name? Yes. Okay. Uh, I've just been confused between Doite and Diot, but yeah, I, he's been one of my absolute legends um, who I've been following for quite some time, and I just love his post. So he's currently ranked 13, he's 4x Grandmaster, discussion rank 1, notebook rank 1. Oh, he's dropped the data sets rank 5. Damn it. <laughs> and then Grandmaster's rank 15. All right, let's do this. Cool. So then uh, as part of this competition, what do you have to do? is there's like these NFL videos. So you can see mm -hmm. how every, pretty much every player, or what, you, what should I, um, yeah, every every team player in this sport has a hel is wearing a helmet. And then you have a label across every helmet. So if I follow this number 23, you can see how that number 23 goes from the 40 yard line all the way to the 50 yard line. So that's this number 23 going right there. And then anytime there's an impact between two players, the helmets are shown as red. So it's just the same bounding box. Um, but that's the, like that was the problem in this. Basically you're given a bunch of videos. So when I say bunch, I think it's in the hundreds, uh, if not in the thousands, actually I'll have to confirm uh, how mm -hmm. many videos. But the but what exactly you have to do is every anytime there's an impact between the helmets of two players, uh, anytime basically yeah anytime there's an impact between the helmet of two players, you have to predict that moment in in unknown or unseen videos. Does that make sense, Sam? It does. Also to point out whenever there's an impact, it's being highlighted as red for like anyone watching. And also what we're trying to predict by labels is the bounding box around the players. I think head or helmet. Yeah, it's the helmet. So anytime okay. there's an impact, you predict the bounding box across the helmets of the players that, that had an impact. That's my understanding of this competition. Makes sense. All right. Um, so let's have a look at the top place solution. So let's start with... Could you please ninth. zoom in a bit? I see a yeah, lot sure of white can. space on the right side. Okay. This is perfect. Uh, oh. Exactly. Let me just make my... Um, I'm just trying to see if I can change the scale, not if I only show on the screen. Okay, that's fine. This should be fine. Let me know, Sam, if it's... um. This looks good, thanks. All right. Uh, so then let's see. So this is the ninth place solution. It does 2D detection and 3D classification. Okay. 
Um, by the way, this is also the first time I'm reading this, so. Yeah, same for me. I have right. not, I have not read anything. Cool. Um, so we know what we have to do is like in this image, you have two helmets colliding, and then that becomes the bounding box of the impact. Correct. Right. Okay. Our solution consists of two-step pipeline followed by some post-processing. We use 2D detection to find possible impact boxes. Then we use 3D classification to determine which boxes are impacts. That makes sense. Okay. So they're using 3D classification, which means there's going to be a bunch of frames going into this. Right. Um, do you follow so far, CM? Yep, I do. All right. Using 2D, is this a helmet impact? So our detection model finds the yellow box as a possible helmet impact. So that's correct. That's just like a 2D detection, right? If you have an image, yeah. all you have to do is you predict a bounding box, which is not very different from any bounding box detection that we do uh, outside of this competition. So from only 2D, from only 2D, which is just this one image, it is impossible to know whether these helmets are about to impact. That is correct. Hmm. Uh, yep. That because sense. from one frame you don't know, right? Yep. You could have a look at the previous three frames to see if the helmets are coming close to each other, I guess. Right. Uh, sorry, just give me one sec. I mean, it makes sense otherwise, like, because you're looking at a 2D image, otherwise, like, they might just be crossing each other, the two persons, and we can't Correct. be sure if they're actually colliding or not. And, like, there could also be all these other ways of, of uh, people colliding, uh, like it could be helmet or it could be it could be shoulder, it could be body and like all those things, right? So it doesn't you don't know if it's gonna be like if the helmets are about to impact. Alright, so that's the main first thing. Uh the next thing let's read about this. It appears probable, but maybe the silver helmet is about to pass behind the white helmet. Which makes sense. I mean the silver is the visitor, I guess, or the white is the home. It doesn't really matter which one's the visitor, which one's the home. But one team has silver helmets, one team has white helmets in this particular image. And I guess what they're trying to say is it's hard to just look at one image, right? Correct. Okay. So now let's see what, what, what did it do to actually fix this problem. So our classification model uses frames before and after this frame. Okay. That when does you say make before sense. or after, is it just like, I, I guess we'll find out. Maybe it's just like more than one frame. I was just assuming it's just one frame before and after. No, it's multiple frames before from the looks of it and multiple frames after. Yeah. Four to be precise. Four before four and frames. four after. Correct. Uh, with this information, our classification model correctly identifies these two helmets do not impact, but rather pass by each other. Hmm. I see. Okay. They don't impact? Is that not an impact? Ooh. Am I blind? <laughs> that looks like a... How, how do they define an impact? Impact is like they should touch. That's an impact. So do they really pass by? Is that how... how Maybe like is, is that the case? Like the helmets need to collide and not the two persons? But that's correct because that that's why the helmet detection... Okay, so it's, this is just... If we see it's coming this way, this way... Close and I guess it's very close. They don't really. Hmm. And then you see. All right, that makes sense because the okay the silver helmet helmet is actually behind the white helmet from two D, so it actually hmm. is just going past. You can see here, it's just going past. I mean, we can see. already see why this is like a quite interesting problem. Yeah, and it's also we can also see why it's a a difficult problem because yeah. that. It's very hard to say it's not an impact, I guess. Anyway, it's just one solution. It's just one, sorry, it's just one example. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Um, so, all right. So that's the that's the main overview. Like they use 2D to just define these frames where they think it could be an impact. And then you crop an area around it, right? You crop an area around it. And then you take the previous frames and the frames after. So you have like nine frames, and then this could be nine by three by 128 by 128, I guess. That becomes your matrix, which goes into a 3D model to say it's a classifier or not. Uh, it's a it's an impact or not. 
Does that make sense, Ayam? It does, yes. Okay, excellent. So let's read through the actual uh, impact detection. Let's read through the 2D models, and then let's read, read through the 3D models, and what else is there? And the validation, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Validation, post-processing. Okay, it's there's quite a bit to the solution. <laughs> I had no idea. All That's right, what we can through. expect from Chris Dio. That's correct. That's correct. He's a champion. Um, so let's go through the impact detection model. We use Detector RS. That's fine. It's just part of MM detection. So I guess they could have used any model. I don't think the specifics of which model they use right now is very relevant. I guess we, mm -hmm. because we're just trying to understand the high level. It's just OK to say that they used some object detection model for detecting impacts. The model was built in like, two steps. I'm always like very curious how did they arrive on this? And like as we learned in the previous live stream, it's just like a bunch of experiments where like they're tracking it, let's say in weights and biases, and that's how they arrive at that decision. Okay, this is the model that's working based for like whatever problem. Yeah, I guess you just do experiments, you track your experiments and then you see like which one gets the highest validation accuracy. And yeah. Um that's been my understanding as well. Of, of doing these things. Like you could have tried various different, maybe retina net, maybe some other, maybe cascade RNN, or there's like detector RS. So you could have tried a few different, um, MM detection actually has a lot of models in it. So if you go in and we can see, there we are, RPN, there's like all of these different models that are part of this. So you could try a few of them. Awesome. Um, I guess that's what's happening. Okay. Then, Let's see how this impact detection models, because then this is also a tough thing, right? To, to in there's so many helmets like this. Like if you look at this image, like these two helmets are close to each other. There's like yes. I don't know what's going on in in this part of the image. Like to me, the silver helmet is see that really small silver helmet over there. Yeah, it's this tiny one that looks really close to the white one. It does. Uh, and is this not an impact then between the silver and the white, even though it's blurry? Is this not an impact? You know what I, I mean? It looks like looks like so. Yeah. So everything's it's like a really hard problem to solve, I guess. And then that's why this detection model on its own is a tough one. So let's see mm -hmm. what they're doing. So they use helmet detection for warm up. That's fine. Uh we try to help they they mean the neural network warm up and not the <laughs> game warm up. <laughs> Correct. And it's mostly just the pre trained weights, right. I guess, for the next thing they want to do. So we trained a helmet detection model for 12 epochs, cool, using the train helmet data set, which is in the image folder. That's correct. We already know of that data set. So uh, there's like this data set. If you see these nine images, it hasn't changed in this competition in the past competition. It's like you have these nine images and you have a helmet. You have a helmet for basically, the, like this is just, there's a bounding box for every helmet in the image. Does that make sense? It does. So what they're saying is for warm up or like just the pre-trained weights, we they just trained a, a helmet detection model for each of the images. These are like ten thousand images, I guess. Does it does it say that? Uh, it doesn't say that. But anyway, in the images folder, they're like ten thousand images. We could confirm that by just going to the competition data, data. and images. Yeah, nine nine four seven. So there's like these there's like these ten thousand images. So as you can mm -hmm. see. There's like lots of these images. And for each of these images, you have a bounding box for each helmet, which looks something like this. So if you can that see in this sense. image, so what they did for those 10,000 images, they just trained a helmet detection model and they got 0.877 validation score, which is hooray. Um, so that's good. So that's the first thing. I guess the first step to solving impact detection is to first let the model learn where the helmets are, correct? Right. 0.877, is that just accuracy? Uh, validation score. I would say it's bounding box map score. So bounding boxes are over mean average precision. Okay. Um, and mean average precision underscore 50 just means the intersection over union is at 50. Uh, so I guess for this, I would like to, I guess because you asked this data set, uh, asked this question, um, the Coco data set actually has been really, really well. So one second. Um, so if you go to this evaluate, I guess, under this, and you see evaluate detection, then they pretty much explain all the metrics that there are. So you can That's see how there's like average precision, and then what does average precision underscore 50 means? It just means average precision at 
uh, intersection over U- Union 50. So I won't go into the details because that's not what we're discussing today. Got it. Um, but that's the idea. So that, that's a 0.877 average position, uh, mean average position, or a map score. Cool. Um, even that is quite high because I think, yeah, that's a, that's a quite high score. So if you have a look at Coco benchmark, um, let's see what's the AP50 scores generally like on Coco. So B-Box, AP, Pounding Box, AP50. Uh, they're typically around 785 for the best performing model on Coco. So that's that's a good score, I guess. I was just trying to have a look at the baseline. Cool. Um, so then they use the final weights of the helmet detection model as pre-trained weights. And we benched somebody's notebook. We'll check whose. Uh, this, who is it? Um, Pito. So, oh, not available. Okay. Um, so they use somebody who's unknown. <laughs> or has if you left just cable. look up the name, if you just look up the name, I think you should be able to find them. All right. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So Tokyo, Japan, search engineer. Oh, current rank forty fifth. That's Don't incredible. Fine master. Yeah, that is incredible. Ten goals. Oh my god. Take a bow. <laughs> Take a bow, everybody. <laughs> um. So they benched that somebody else's who's really awesome person's notebook and set plus minus four frames from impact as impact class. That makes sense, okay. We'll have to check which notebook they're talking about, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, So what they're saying is it's a two class model. I see, I see, I see. What are the two classes here? Uh, It's an impact or non-impact. Right. Okay. Uh, makes sense. And detects imp. Oh my God, this is genius. Okay, makes sense. All right. Um, I'll have to duplicate my screens to try and explain what I've. Sure. This is great. I love reading Haggle solutions. Oh my God, that's just blew my mind. Um, and it's just like the beginning of the solution, which is just like twenty <laughs> percent or ten percent of the solution, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I must yeah, be so should, dumb. <laughs> we, should fi- we should do this on every weekend. We should just like fix the time. Every yeah. time it's so much learning. Totally. Um, all right. Uh, one sec. Let me just open one node. Give me a second. I'll just stop sharing my screen. We have our colleague Ayush in the chat. I hope he doesn't oh. tell work. Hey, Ayush. Don't tell work. We're doing this. Uh, so let's go. Add section, um, add section. What am I looking at? We're looking at Chris Stewart's impact model. Oh, no, I just want to just want to say, like, cool. Um, all right, I'm ready to share screen again. Please do. And that should be fine. Um, so. Oh, I can don't you see, see it yet. No, not yet. Okay. How, how um, about now? It okay. So it like it usually takes a second, and I need to add to it. Now, now I know what I need to do. Cool. So um, the software I, we're using, we need to add the lives, the screen share to the live stream. I didn't know that. Absolutely. Um. So I just want to point out everybody who's watching to our colleague, awesome colleague Ayush Thakur. He's um, he's a notebooks master, rank sixty six, and a discussion expert. And he lo- he writes really amazing notebooks that I've seen. So he's he's done lots of notebooks, uh, I guess, in gold and silver. And every recent notebook has been a medal. Since the last time I visited his profile, that gold is still in you. So like he he puts out incredible stuff in just like such short spans. Like this notebook yeah. wasn't there the last time I saw his profile. Yeah. So I guess there's lots of EDA happening. Um, so brain team at EDA interactive is okay. Interesting. Um, so yeah, so do check out his profile, everybody, if you're if you're here. Um, so that's that. Um, so let's go next to where were we? We were at the impact detection. Okay, so I was gonna say what's happening here. Cool. Um, so you have so in in an in an video 
what you have is you have like these multiple frames, right? That's the frames, right? That's what, that's how it's going to be. And in these frames, you can see my screen, right, CM? Yes, I can. Okay. In these frames, there's going to be like people. Uh, there's going to be like these team players. And in these images, they're going to be wearing helmets, which I'm just going to highlight like that. So that's the helmet. That's the helmet. Um, that's the helmet. That's the helmet. Maybe I should use a different color. So maybe that color. So that's a helmet, 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 and so on. Um, mm -hmm. And then what they're doing is what they're doing is they started with helmet detection first. So that's the first thing. And then here's the second one. So they used eventually does not work and set plus minus frame from impact as impact class. So they pretty much anytime there's an impact. So if this is my frame, let's say this is frame 100 because in an image you'd have or in a video you'd have like 250 to 300 frames. Right. Anyway, like it could be some number. So I'm just saying 250 to 300. I mean, like and usually videos are like 25 to 30 frames per second. So like even five seconds, yeah. becomes 150 so, frames. Anytime there's an impact, which I've shown like this, so this is an impact, right? Anytime there's an impact, you take the minus four and the plus four frames, and you set every bounding box in those minus four, and you set every bounding box in those plus four. So these are whatever bounding boxes there are in these images or in these frames, and you set them as, and you use them as impact bounding boxes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then everything else, because there's all these other frames that are also going to have like lots of more bounding boxes, right? Okay. Uh, you set them as no impact. Does that make that sense? sense? It does. Okay. I just hope I got that right. Cool. So I guess that's what they did. We used that notebook and set plus minus four frames from impact as impact class. That's my understanding. So let's have a look at that notebook. So they've created a label of sorts as an impact class. Correct. Correct. Because in because in bounding boxes, you how would the detect, detector, like it just knows helmets right now, but how does the detector know which one's impact and which one is not impact, I guess. So let's see. Let's go to their code profile and you can search for is it. There it is. Oh, this is a different one, by the way. Updated 20 hours ago. So this is the latest one. That's what we can expect from a Kaggle Grandmaster. Absolutely. I guess if I go and if I just search NFL, yeah. it should show up. OK. There it is, two class object detection training. So let's have a look at that notebook first. All right, class one, helmet without impact. Class two, helmet with impact. I was right, I guess, so far. Uh, data preparation is doing video labels impact greater than zero, right? Okay, so you get all right. They've video label. The... Yep. Oh yeah, you just this is just keeping like this is just the query. It's just saying anywhere there's an impact. So maybe yep. I could copy and edit and just run. Oh, that shouldn't do it here. One second. I just want to do it in a new tab. Anyway just on separate. So this should just be imports, pip install, some imports, which is cool. I'm setting the seed, which is fine. And then you go pretty much for, you cap, you get the video name, you get the frame, and you get the label, makes sense. Then you capture the minus four and the plus four frames. Vasudev was asking frame. in the chat, how did they arrive at the plus and minus four frames for impact? I'm guessing just six. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I would say so. I have no idea how they would. That's a question for Chris and um, the. Uh, that's a question for Chris and Tito. Or I their guess. team. Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest. I I I know about this competition as much as you do, so. <laughs> it's the first time I'm reading this as well. Like we said, well, we're just, just learning in public, so <laughs> correct and embarrassing myself in public. So that's that's the idea. Anyway, uh, so video labels video. All right, what is this doing? It's just a lock. Okay, so it's just finding everywhere there's that video. 
row zero because the row you just ca do that that makes sense and you grab the video frame okay that makes sense you grab the labels and you say wherever there's an impact so let's have a look where is this impact what's the impact here it is impact one two one 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 okay makes sense so cool that's that impact is just an impact type. It's either impact by shoulder or impact by helmet, I guess. And then, so in this one, they're just grabbing all the frames where uh, plus minus four frames, and you're just grabbing the labels from those frames. And then you just. From, from what I understand, we just need to predict the helmet collisions, right? Not the shoulder ones. Correct, correct. Okay. And then you just set X, Y, W, H. You just pretty much replace left off. And that's fine. This is just, and then that gives you this. Which is cool. That makes sense. Um, so now what you have is pretty much you have. Oh, I wish I could I could run this on the side. So let me just so I can just have a look at the shapes and stuff. All right. Oh, don't run this on a GPU. All right. Maybe do it. Who cares? Um, I shouldn't say who cares. I do care. <laughs> I, I recently <laughs> ran out of my I, GPU credit. I was going to say you're gonna run out of your credit soon. Yeah, I do care. When I say who cares, that was the wrong thing to say. I do care. Um, cool. So then that you just get the valid and the train, you make your images, that's fair enough. You get all the unique videos, you apply the augmentations, data set. So that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. You just pretty much have uh you just set the labels, which is fine. I just want to see, oh, there it is. You're just setting the label. This is just setting the impact as one. And then where do they set the impact as two, I guess? I just want to see that. Uh, maybe the impact type one is for helmet detection. I'm so, just curious, like, maybe we don't need to do that. Because, like, how's what that? Is, what is that? Why do we need how, to do this? How, no, like how how is the shoulder impact useful? Like if we're grabbing those labels also, because we don't care uh, about that, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what the impact means. So I guess we'll have to go back to the competition. Um, so let's go back to the competition. NFL first and future, and then let's just 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 see what the data says. Do they have? So impact. Oh, there it is. Impact equals for purposes of evaluation. Definitive helmet, helmet impacts are defined as meeting three criteria. Impact equals one, confidence greater than one, visibility greater than zero. Okay, mm -hmm. so impact is equal to one when there's an impact, an indicator that's one. It. All right, that's it, that, that's fine. Okay. Uh, impact type are these other impact types. Okay. Cool, I that's guess that's, that's fair enough. I guess that's all they're doing in that context. I guess we got the idea. We were just meant to see like what exactly this notebook is doing. It's doing exactly the same thing as I thought it is. It's yeah. just finding all those bounding boxes as impact bounding boxes. So now you have a pretty much from like this two-stage approach, now you have a, a detector model that can, by looking at an image and by looking at, basically by looking at the image, it can predict bounding boxes that it thinks are impacts. Does that make sense? Are we just looking at the image, or are we also looking at the four frames before and after? Right now, we're just looking at the image. Mm -hmm. So this is just setting the labels. Right. Okay. Okay. This is this is uh, you're you're pretty much just setting the labels here, Sam. I think you're confusing yourself. We're mm -hmm. not looking at plus minus four frames. We just have every image. For every image, you have a helmet detection model, and then anytime there's an impact, you just set the f you just set the labels as one on the current frame, minus four frames, and the plus four frames. So any bounding boxes in the nine frame, uh, what I'm trying to say, like in that nine frame, basically area or that that region window. wherever there's these yeah. nine frames or that window correct that's the word thanks so in that nine frame window you said all bounding boxes is impact bounding boxes and then everything else is a non-impact non bounding box and then you train a model that's that's trying to predict these impact bounding boxes and that's that hmm. i guess that um, but I, I, to... I was just confused because like i wasn't sure how do you do that without having those like plus and minus four frames but i guess you could which yeah. is the nice. i'll just have to confirm on what exactly is going on in this one but i guess that's the so far, so good. I guess that's the main idea. I could be wrong. I haven't really looked at this notebook completely, but um, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, because you grab the frame and then you say video frame is in frames and video labels equals that. Uh, and then you just say impact equals one. So you just convert that to be pretty much 
you just say it's a definitive impact for in in those nine frames. Cool. Um, so then, using the helmet detection model as pre-trained weights makes the model converge faster. That's fine. Uh, so let's see what's happening next. This approach showed good performance to detect impact. But is it really? It, yeah, it is detecting impact, right? Because you can just now you still have a model that's that's you have a model that's detecting impact. Sure. So that's like job done. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. Sam? Yeah. Yeah. By by this time, just by doing this two-stage approach, you have detected models that you have detected models that that can find basically impact in your in your video frames. So that's the job done. Um, but it does give like a 0.39 LB score. After can you just look at the leaderboard? Sure can. Um, I'm just curious, like, where is that on the leaderboard? That could be a great or bad score, and we wouldn't. Oh, it's a really bad score. <laughs> As in, <laughs> I mean, oh no, it isn't. Oh, sorry. Just somebody's just. There's this. Oh, is it Dimit Dimitro? Dimitro is oh. is a legend. Like, look at look at the number of entries. That's incredible. Yeah, six. And then you see, like, what he's done is, like, his score is 0.7. So by looking at this, I was like, oh, everybody's going to be in the 0.75 range. But that point, oh, sorry. But that 0.39 would actually be wow. in a rank 19. So that's 19. their baseline. All right, Christy, I'll take a bow. Their baseline is, like, a, their baseline is like a 20 ranked solution for this competition. We need to oh, read wow. Dimitro's solution after this. I'm, like, really curious about that now. Yeah, yeah. Also, Azad, right. he's done just seven submissions, I think, if I saw correctly. Uh, yeah. Guan yeah, Xu as well. Where Xu, is Guan Xu? Five submissions. Oh, there it is. Oh, you guys are absolute legends. All right. That's insane. Um, we don't need that. Cool. So then that's that. It gives you a 0 0.39. Then we set a lower confidence score. Uh, after we plug in the classifier, detector RS showed good, but took a long time to test ideas. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Um, that's pretty straightforward then. By this time, you have a 20th place solution just by doing this. Step two is the impact classification model. Um, so let's see what happens there. 2D models. So this is written by Theo Vale. He's also a capital grandmaster. Ranked 18. All right, we're this is a team of legends, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, so you have. I kept struggling with improving my efficient debt models. All right. Okay. As I had no experience with object detection, I can totally relate to that. Uh, I figured <laughs> out it would be harder to go back to what I can do. Classification models. I totally relate to that. <laughs> that would have been me this team. <laughs> um, the main idea was crop around a helmet has the same information regarding whether it is an impact or not as the whole image, correct? Uh, therefore, I extracted 64 cross 64 crop around all the boxes in the training data. I, all right, that okay. Sense. And started building models to predict whether crop had an impact to tackle imbalance I used to... Sorry, I'm Do just reading what's fast. The image size? I'm just curious what's the image size. I think it's 640 by something, but don't quote me mm -hmm. on it. You'll have to check, should be. Uh, don't ask me that question right now because I think it's... Sh Let me just quickly read through this first. Uh, sure. To tackle imbalance, I used the plus four minus extended label as a lot of people did after a few walking had a bunch of models. Oh, wow. Okay. Again, I blew my, it blew my mind. All right. So, all right. So what what is the question? Sorry, Sam, I couldn't... Uh, I was just curious about the time. image sizes because like how how... Much are we cropped in with the 64 by 64 crop? I'm just curious. Uh, I guess we could just have a look. I guess I'll just see if I can read one image. I think they're like 640 by something. Um, so from EIL import, unless it's imported already, image dot open that dot size. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one two eight zero. But I guess all images are that size. When I was looking mm. at this last, so all images are that size. So that's the width, that's the height. Cool, interesting. Um, so then, what what uh, Theo Vale has done is the main idea is that a crop around a helmet has the same whether it's an impact, regarding whether that is correct. I do agree to tackle, and then I extracted sixty four around all the boxes to predict whether a crop had an impact. Okay, interesting. 
I see. This is proving to be really, really helpful. Um, so this is my image, right? And I have a bunch of people here. And let's say I'm just going to make this diagonal just to show, like, this is the impact, right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is, like, what they've done here is you just grab a 64 by 64 crop around pretty much every bounding box that's in the image. Does that make sense? So you yeah, have so like this. Just, um, I was just thinking we're just removing all of the extra noise. We are. But then you also grab the minus four frames and the plus four frames. Minus four frames and the plus four frames. Minus four frames and the plus four frames. So in your data set, you have uh, three, basically like three matrices, right? This is going to mm -hmm. be nine by three by 64 by 64. All three of them are going to be this, this shape. Does that make sense, Am? It does, yes. All right. Uh, and then what you know is like this one is impact equals one. And these ones at the top are impact equal to zero. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So now what you could do is you could build a, a, a 3D classifier that can predict by looking at these crops whether the thing is impact or not. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yep. So that's the second model. So that's what they built. And then I guess what you could do as a final pipeline is like you have an image, you pass it through your impact detection model, impact detection model. In that image, it's going to have uh, bounding boxes around. It's going to say like, this is an area of possible impact. This is an area of possible impact. Then from this, you get your two nine by nine matrices. Um, this one goes here, this one goes here. And then you pass these to your 3D classification model which will say, oh, this is impact and this is not impact. That makes sense. All right, that's what they did, I guess. Awesome. So to tackle imbalance, of course, there's going to be imbalance because there's like 900,000 frames with no impact and then only a few frames with impact. Yeah. So I had a bunch of models with 0.9 plus AUC, resonant 18, 34, and efficient at B0 to B3. And remember, these are all 3D models, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it says 2D. What? How is that a 2D model? Uh, extract around the bolts and started. Oh, I'm really, really sorry. This is incorrect. That's not what they did. Instead of just using 3D, this is just 2D. This is just the crop. Sorry, I'm so sorry. You just get the crop. Mirror. This is me embarrassing myself, but this is what <laughs> happens when you're doing things live and reading them for the first time. I just uh, so I guess you could just do this. self questioning. That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could just do this. Does right. this make sense? It does. These are just crops. You don't even have to have like minus plus minus frames. You could just take the crop in the image. So you have an mm -hmm. you have an impact detection model that just given an image, it just says, okay, here's a possible impact, here's a possible impact, and then you could take the crops and you could pass those crops to a 2D classifier, I guess. That makes sense. That's what they did. So this is why they say it's a 2D model. I'm sorry about that. And they just use like these three or four models and tricks used for 2D models include limiting the number of boxes sampled per player at each epoch in order to have more control. Okay, you have a learning risk scheduler removing the stride of the first layer. That makes sense. That actually makes sense. I'm not um, clear about how are they limiting the number of boxes. Oh, you just limit, you just sample. Like, you just say if the player ID is X, then just select like, instead of the 100, just select like five. Hmm. That's it. Um, and they're using hmm. paid averaging and they're using augmentations. Cool. 
so then I used somebody else's detector to benchmark how bad my models were on the public leaderboard. <laughs> Turns out, after some post processing, this achieved 0.33 plus, which at the time was in the gold zone. That's incredible. All right. That's incredible. So this person has done something else. Like, this is a completely different approach of solving the same problem, right? Mm -hmm. This also does the same thing. You just take a detector. Like, he took a, I think he just took a public notebook, I guess. Unless this is somebody who, yeah, it says trained helmet detector. So there's the detector. You can find the model here. So, interesting. Um, so this person then just took that detector and just applied things and was able to get 0.33 plus. Interesting. Interesting. All right. There's also 3D models. Oh, this is where they take the other frames. See that? Instead of just frame zero, you just take the minus plus minus frames. Gotcha. So there's like these two ways of doing this. Instead of just having 2D, you could also have 3D here. This is that how they, sense. like, you could, now this could be 3D. Yeah, but we just assumed a minute earlier. Yeah. This is the case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. All right. I just assume, I just assume that because I thought that makes more sense. Like in mm -hmm. my head, int intuition wise, that was making more sense because you, even in crops, you want to see like how far the helmets are and are they coming towards each other or going away from each other. Um, so that's why I thought, because that's what they were doing like in this, just at the beginning, uh, which is just a simple classification model. Like that's what they said in this, uh, like this was the overview of the overview of the solution, right? They said they're using 3D. So I just assume that's that. But they actually came to this after 2D. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so shortly after, I merged with the rest of the team. Two weeks left. And we couldn't beat the detector LB 0.39 plus. And they reached 0.41. So how did they go from 0.41 to where did they end up being in the end? They ended up being at 0.51. So in two weeks, in the last two weeks, they've gone up. <laughs> and they've gone further up. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> there's this known thing inside of the Kaggle community. You like if you were competing, you will probably make your last mission just a few minutes, just a few minutes before the deadline. So that is correct. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so that's all that that's happening. And uh, so now that you now I upgraded the models from 2D to 3D. Pipeline was easy to adapt. That would be, I can guarantee that because there's not much changes. Uh, first batch of model 3D was based on this public repository, 3D ResNets, which is fine. And only additional trick was getting rid of the strides. Oh, this is a good trick. Okay. This takes away the bugs. All right. Sorry. I just, <laughs> I just, I got excited because um, yesterday I, I was working on something. I think some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like having a minimum number of channels for something to work, but mm -hmm. this will this will solve that. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Theo, for solving a problem. Uh, cool. So you just have like plus minus nine frames, and then, in fact, a jump to point five nine came from retraining on the whole data set and some post processing parameters. Okay, so they're saying like. Instead of having 2D, like having 3D models helped CV, but not so much the public LB. Mm -hmm. They did, however, help the private LB. But this was after the week leak, so didn't know. I don't know if there was a leak in this competition. There must have been one. Okay. And then uh, this is more on 3D models, so I guess we can skip that. Or let's see. Yeah, they just use different 3D models. That is fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is fine. The rest of the team is still working. That's all good. I love uh, how natural the above write up was. Uh, yeah, I love it. Like, totally. This is like the because, most honest. Yeah. Is another right? submissions because of my procrastination. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like the, the, this person probably ended up enjoying New Year's, which you should do, right? So, uh, Gave them a small and we reached 0.5 plus. Okay, and then this is all about validation, trust your CV. So they're able to like, I, I remember, I, I know of this, like what Christy Ott had done is like, you could actually view the whole submission as a video. 
So, mm -hmm. uh, so if you can see, this is like, I guess the reds are the predictions and the blue are the actual impact. So like, you can see there's like these predictions, predictions, mm -hmm. blue are the predictions, reds are the impact or something like that. And you can see how the players are moving because you have all this data. So you can play the video frame by frame. This is a really cool trick to check your own models and see if they're really working or not. So you see how the helmet detection is actually just detecting helmets? Right. Uh, it's not detecting all the helmets. It's like detecting very few helmets, I guess. Let's see. Is that In because of the one, sampling that we said? Like, that we just talked uh, about? I'm not sure. Maybe, with, maybe they're just showing few helmets. They're just showing the helmets that they think are about to impact. For example, these mm. ones. So I guess it could just be the way this video has been um, written, or like hmm. made. Cool, cool, all good. And validation, trust your CV. And then this was thresholding. So this is just post-processing. Good thresholds for both detection classification models. Single split is not enough. Uh, entire train set, five folds. Following tricks improve. Different thresholds for this makes sense. Uh, we have the same threshold, so you don't want 0.5. Then they made detection threshold to be 0.35 to include more helmet detections. And then you could have maybe a higher threshold for classification and then use the model to classify the impacts. Cool. Um, this is different thresholds for end zone and sideline views. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, we realized that using thresholds, different thresholds can improve both CV and LP. So mm. we tried different combinations and best CV was achieved by using around 0 0.05 higher threshold in sideline than end zone. I guess, Sam, didn't you just say before, like like two hours ago, that yeah. I think sideline would be a better way to look at than end zone? Yeah, I mean, like at least in my intuition, it just like looks more top down. So like I can just like see everyone clearly in the image. Yeah, so, well, I guess the intuition matches the CV scores. And this is exactly what they did. They just had higher weights for, um, higher thresholds for uh, sideline and end zone. Okay. Vasudev is curious about the strikes trick that we just got excited about. Should we go oh. back and talk about that? Yeah, we can do. Just give me one sec. It's just, um, so in a model, you have like the first cnn then the second cnn then third and so on um basically i think the first one is like a conv seven cross seven kernel stride equals two i'll have to confirm but what you could do is because it's and if, if your input is like 64 by 64 then if it goes through this kernel the output's going to be really really small it's going to be like eight cross eight and then this thing can't really pop propagate through other cons because it's trying to reduce it more and more and in the end it's going to be like one by one and then you can't really pass that through a convolution kernel because how do you do convolution on that so all they're saying is like instead of having stride equals two you just have stride equals one so then instead of it this being eight by eight it, it becomes like 32 by 32 or something like that and then that still works um that's the trick all right uh i guess i'm going to stop here because that's just we just discussed that whole solution there's not really much left um, so we just discussed the ninth resolution today and that's where we'll stop. Um, so thanks for having me, Sayam, and thanks everybody for joining. See you guys next time. Thanks for joining guys in the live stream.